These are just wonderful uh, speed graphic newspaper photos from the 40s and 50s. And I found these at the Minnesota Historical Society. That's where they're all from. But we have copies because these were all uncatalogued newspaper negatives. They've got boxes and boxes of these uncatalogued negatives. And I started going through them maybe 20 years ago, and I was finding all these gems in there. And so I went over to the Historical Society and volunteered to uh, find them, scan them, and log them into their system. And, uh, and in exchange for that, the Minnesota Streetcar Museum got copies of about 250 of these. And so they're just all over the place. Uh, you may have seen a couple of these in other presentations. Um, what was kind of the norm was when something went terribly wrong and a newspaper photographer would show up. Uh, and so you get mostly bad news, uh, but a certain amount of uh, human interest stuff and all. So here we are out on the uh, Hamlin Cherokee line on the Hamlin portion of it, Thomas and St. Albans. And uh, this streetcar has somehow managed to get crossways in the street. And they're trying to figure out what to do about that. And of course, it attracts a crowd of neighborhoods, including kids with bicycles. That's kind of a standard. And all the housewives have come out. Hey, Aaron, go back yeah. on that one. Is that a trolley hook on that car? All the PCCs had trolley hooks. Oh, Our you're right. I'm sorry. Never mind. All right. Um, so I'm just skipping all over the place with these. This is a, just a really nice shot taken at Emerald and University, the St. Paul city limits. Here's the big city limits sign here. And here's the Y where they can turn cars around at Emerald University. Um, this is kind of typical. Um, you are at the intersection of Snelling Avenue where it crossed the Northern Pacific at grade, which it doesn't do anymore. Now there's a bridge. And something as bad has happened there. And you got this huge backup on Snelling Avenue to the south. As you can see, it's got three streetcars in it. For some reason, it's caught a work car. And here in the front, you can see how, uh, as it, with so many railroad grade crossings, they narrowed it down to a single track to uh, keep the maintenance cost down since Twin City Lines was on the hook for the maintenance cost. And here's a bad thing. A cement truck has rolled over. Hey. At, uh, at the corner of St. Clair and West 7th Street. Uh, this is uh, the St. Clair line taking off and the streetcars are on West 7th Street. And uh, apparently, I, well, it's interesting though, it ran into this and made that possible. This is a uh, funeral home is still there. As I, I think most of the buildings that you see here. Now, this is uh, up West 7th Street at Grand Avenue. This is the Grand Avenue line taking off on what was called Ramsey Street at the time. Um, now it's called Grand. And uh, what's happened is the water main is broken. You can see it all puddling up here. Naturally, it's drawn a crowd. And uh, hot wrap tasty bread up there on the sign. Ham's beer over here. And this is another angle on that very same blockage. And here you see it was bubbling up here and it's running down. Um, there's another beer. I wonder who, who that was. Now in this picture, or go back Aaron, in that previous picture, you can see all the streetcars are lined up. Do they, would they not cross the tracks for some reason due to the water? Well, you know, it shouldn't have been a problem here. Although, although, doesn't this look like water bubbling up over here on top of the track? It is. Oh, yeah, yeah it sure right. does. So I think that, that might have been, been one concern that, Let's that go the back ground the under there oh, yeah, yeah. unstable. Oh, yeah, yeah, you see it closer. Yep. There's bubble okay. at the same spot. So That, that could have created crazy. a cavity under the track. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Good catch. I didn't see that. I had not noticed that, though, before. Thank you for catching that. Uh, and so even snow plows derailed. This one is on Randolph Avenue, west of Snelling. And one little detail here, here's this brush, which you see on a couple of the cars to kind of brush away the flange way. Clearly oh, it yeah. did not work in this case. <laughs> uh, here's more water. This is on the Dale Street line at Ashland near Selby. And something has broken and uh, 
either has broken or there's just been a really big deluge. So this is the Dale Street car not going through it. I ran this one on the cover of Twin City Lines. Uh, this is a fender bender at the corner of Franklin and Cedar. The streetcars are turning off Cedar and they've crunched an automobile. And what I remember was somebody saying, whoops, come back here. Was somebody saying, who's this guy in the swimsuit and why is he in a swimsuit? This is the intersection that the Milwaukee Road went diagonally right through. And here you see the Milwaukee Road tracks. So maybe they were getting ready just to pick up the car, all those guys. Sure, why not? Um, this is a derailment. This was a Grand Avenue car that was attempting to make the corner from Lake Street onto Nicollet and derailed. Here you see the service truck here. And this makes you feel sad because there was all this great development around Lake and Nicollet, and it's all just a wasteland now. You know, they, they closed Nicollet here and put the Kmart in. Um, had the big candy store, Northwestern National Bank. And right behind it, of course, was uh, uh, Nicollet Ballpark. So this uh, view right here, Aaron, yeah, that's that's where the Kmart in the parking lot is now. Uh, the Kmart in the parking lot is kind of out of the frame at right okay. and behind the camera. You're looking okay. southwest. Okay, got it. Okay, Rod, that, that's the uh, corner that I wrote about in the last issue of your little newsletter. Right. Uh, where they would come smoking in here to this stop right in front of the candy store with the track brakes locked. <laughs> There's a busy corner. And okay, uh, yeah, there were two movie theaters. Here, of course, is the reason they put movies on islands. And because if you got hit by a Hudson Hornet, you got hit. Well, a lightweight compared to a streetcar. True, but uh, heavyweight compared to everything else. Um, here is uh, the redecking of the uh, Lake Street Bridge, and they were running cars the wrong way. They had temporary crossovers at either end. And here's a, here's a view of the East End during that process, and here's the temporary crossover. Mm. And another view, in this case, the other track is in business. There's a little hand car on it. Did they just uh, kind of leave it up to the operators not to meet each other on the bridge on that single track? Uh, well, there were flaggers on both ends of the bridge. And I think they probably did the thing like a single track, you know, like a single lane on a highway. Right. Yeah. You know, because they could see each other across the bridge. Yeah, they they've got a little, a little hut there. Yeah, there's a little the shack, flaggers. like a, like a starter yeah. shack. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be for the flaggers. Not much has changed around. No, those buildings are still there. Yeah. This gas station up here has been replaced with an apartment building. And uh, this is, let's see, this is um, a University Avenue car making the loop through downtown St. Paul. They came down Wabashaw to Fifth and to Robert, which is behind the camera and then up to Ninth, and both the Como Harriets and the uh, University Avenue cars came all the way from Minneapolis, made this big loop from downtown, took no layover, and went all the way back to Minneapolis without, without laying over. So how they kept them on time, I don't know. But uh, here you see they're working in the areaways. People forget about areaways under these sidewalks, so they put in the temporary, and they're running long, long track. Now, the other thing uh, that had already happened, and I can, well, no, maybe not. Uh, at some point, they turned Fifth Street into a one-way eastbound and stopped using the westbound track. Not quite sure if, this, uh, if that had happened yet. Looks like at the beginning of that temporary turnout, they've got some flags, uh, three flags on oh, yeah. docks there to warn the operator that there's a, a turnout maybe. Yeah, I think that was they had uh, they had lanterns too for night mm -hmm. operation. So here we are up at the Capitol. The streetcar is coming out of Wabasha Street that doesn't exist anymore. 
uh, Wabasha cut an angle from Ryerson University down past the Capitol, and it's all gone on the Capitol grounds now. And there you go, Eastman Kodak Film and Max Factors toilet articles are being sold in this Rexall drugstore. Post no bills. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, post no bills. Bismarck Kriegels. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what that was. And so uh, here's a little snow running at the upper end of the Wabasha Street Bridge. Once again, bad weather would bring the photographers out. And since this was just two blocks from uh, the St. Paul Pioneer Press, it was a convenient place to document it. Uh, this on is that, on, hmm? on that last picture. It's good to know that back in the day there, they didn't clean their back windows off either. <laughs> okay, this is on Thomas Avenue in Frogtown. Uh, you can see the steeple of St. Agnes uh, Church uh, in the distance here. And here's a plow that's on Como Avenue east of Western Avenue, uh, clearing the way for a whole line of cars. And this is uh, by the Emporium on Robert Street between 7th and 8th Street in downtown. Over here, you can see the sign for the Golden Rule department store. And a foggy day uh, next to St. Paul City Hall on 4th Street between uh, Wabasha and St. Peter. And here's Dwight Eisenhower. Wow. Um, addressing mm. a big crowd uh, on the front steps of the Capitol. And here you can see a streetcar going by on, uh, on the new Constitution Avenue. Uh, so this is him running for president uh, in 1952, it would have been, I guess. Uh, here are streetcars on Fifth Street in downtown Minneapolis crossing Third Avenue South. The camera, uh, the photographer is up in City Hall. Here's the Bell Telephone Building, another drugstore downtown. I think it's interesting to see how the cars are parked on the left-hand side. Well, these are all, uh, these are uh, plain police cars. Police oh. have always parked next, next to uh, City Hall. That's right. Here you can see this one has got a spotlight on the side. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, here we are at the corner of Broadway and Penn Avenue North, and this is a funeral for a firefighter. This is the firehouse right here. It's still there. It's not a firehouse anymore, being used for other stuff. Boy, there were a lot of drugstores all over the place. <laughs> Sporting goods, appliance stores. And a gas station on the corner that's now an apartment complex. And way in the distance, there's a Robbinsdale streetcar. I remember that corner really well from my childhood. Oh, yeah. And this is a military recruitment streetcar. It's been painted up. And so here you have people promoting a career in the military. You see it says recruiting on the front here. This is outside Snelling Shops, of course. And this is the Saint Paul, City of St. Paul Streetcar Inspector, which was a real job because the city had a franchise with the St. Paul Street Railway, and they, they needed to... Uh, uh, ensure that the uh, Twin City Lines was living up to the franchise. And so this guy was to go around and inspect maintenance and anything else that needed inspection. Here we have a couple of motormen. Uh, this is probably during training of a new motorman. I guess we got some motorman shots here. Having lunch. Oops. Well, by the way, note this, uh, see these things? This was this later window um, oh. thing where they, they um, the windows would only, they wouldn't drop down into the pocket anymore. 
they would raise up about to the uh, just beyond the height of this, and then they got rid of the outside screens on or the outside. It's hard to call them screens, but meshes that they would put on in the summertime to keep people from sticking their arms out. And they only did this on a certain number of cars. I don't know how many. And uh, I was going to say, here's Russ Isbrandt, but it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> it sure looks like him. Yeah. He's younger than Russ. Yeah. Phil Epstein. <laughs> this, is the, this, this is the unfortunate child of Phil Epstein and uh, Russ Isbrandt. That's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and hereby I noticed these speakers yeah. in this thing. And what's there, that there is black? a My Guy Sunday smorgasbord going on somewhere at the Hotel St. Paul. Yeah. That's a mirror, right? Over his uh cap. Yeah. Yeah, that's so the motorman can see the rear door. Mm -hmm. And just a portrait out on University Avenue. This is probably was when something happened, like a fender bender, and the motorman is just waiting for the cops to leave. It looks almost pasted on. Yeah, no. See, that's the thing. That's how people think today. Oh, this must be photoshopped. Yeah, that no. was a flashbulb effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've got some pictures. I don't know if they're all together here, but here you see the PCC with the conductor station in the back, and someone paying the fare, and this I picture I think was taken as part of documenting the arrival of the new PCC cars. Didn't we all have a cap like that when we were kids? Yeah, love that cap with the ear flaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here's just a really cocky looking motorman. It's Ezra. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, he's got. I, I his... got this. Watch me work. <laughs> and and of course, he's got his changer, which is had, which has the customized token barrel extended. Uh, and you, know, you couldn't buy them that way. You had to go and find somebody in in the in the car barn who did that for you. You probably wouldn't want to bend over forward in a big hurry either. No. Uh, here they did a little piece on washing the streetcars. And here's the the cleaning crew inside. Maybe our cleaning crew needs one of those extendable window washer things. Yeah. This yeah. photo reminds me of Rosie the Riveter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, this is one of these, I think, that is hooked up to water and has water going up through the pipe. Yep. Sure. Yep. Or is this guy, this one isn't connected. This is just kind of a broom. Flushing out the street. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, and I think the purpose wash. of this article is they put in automated washers at Snelling. And, uh, but nonetheless, these other people would kind of prepare the car before they ran it through the wash rack. Here's a new service truck. And you can see this is getting close. We got this is at least some time in the early 50s. We got a bus here. And here's one of the uh, shifter cars pushing trucks around, including I see a PCC truck. Oh, sure. Yeah. And now, then here's the, go ahead. Sorry, on the previous one, is it safe to say that this truck would have been painted the same yellow color that the trolleys were, the street cars? Um, I don't. Know? think I have a color photo of it, but it would seem pretty logical. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Hmm. Just curious. At least the logo should be the same. Yeah. And here's, I found this wonderful sequence of the track crew thawing the track so they could go and do some kind of disassembly of the blocks and do some kind of track repair. And this guy right here has a can full of gasoline or something. And he's the one who's doing it. Here's a motorette who is saying, you I was, know, should I run through this or not? I was just going to point that out. I was like, look, there's a motorette. Yeah. And as you can see, it's a pull-in run. She wants, she's done for the day. She wants to go home. And so here he is. <clears throat> and in the back, we have the Minnesota Popcorn Company. 
and Sparky's Grill. This building right here, by the way, was the, was the original St. Paul Ford plant. There was one of these in Minneapolis and one in St. Paul. And oh, since oh. it's a state little office building now. And so here's some more, waiting for the flames to die down and then they're gonna go and hopefully disassemble uh, the brick. And then they would then put straw over it to hold the heat in. And here's a guy and he's got some kind of a torch here uh, to, to blast away at it. I think this guy too, because uh, look, there's yeah. a bottle. Oh, yeah, that looks something. the same. Wouldn't OSHA have a Haiti oh. with that photo? <laughs> oh, big time. Yeah, there's all kinds of things that can go wrong there. Okay, um, this is the corner of Fifth and Robert, and this is after they did one way of the street. And you can see this, this Buick with the portholes has made an error here. <laughs> And you, uh, here's the power plant. And uh, down here, this is the lower dam station. This was the uh, one, the first of the two hydro stations below the falls. Now, the purpose of this picture was the disassembly of the Minneapolis Western Bridge, which was a rather unsung railroad bridge that the Great Northern put up to get access to the mills on the west side of the river. The mills were the exclusive property of the um, Minneapolis and St. Louis and J James J. Hill was not content with that situation. So he built a bridge uh, just to get to them and steal some of the traffic away. Here's the Pillsbury A mill over here. We're seeing flooding or something here. Look at the level of that. Uh... Looks like ice. Ice, yeah. It, but it's way high on the power plant and yeah, it does, um, yeah. It does, on the buildings along the right hand side of the photograph. Yeah, definitely. It's all flooding. Oh, you know, maybe it took out. Maybe the flooding took out part of this bridge. Possible. Yeah. This looks like an early, yeah. like a, a spring ice flow or something when the river yeah. was flooding. It certainly does. Hmm. Um, this is the St. Paul Auditorium. People are lined up to do something. And uh, this is 4th Street, the 4th Street side of the auditorium with streetcars going by. Uh, you're looking west, by the way, because uh, here's the James J. Hill House up on the top of the of Summit Avenue Hill. And this is Seven Corners down here. Well, I got some pictures of passengers. So this lady's kind of asleep, probably doesn't know her picture's being taken. A lot of cloth coats in this. And wearing babushkas. Yeah, head scarves. And, but uh, in my neighborhood in Providence, Rhode Island, it was a babushka. So here's my question. Since everybody had hats back then, what happened to all those hats? They're all, they're all gone. I found some in my mother-in-law's closet and we had a dickens of a time finding some place to take them, but they're great vintage stuff. Yeah, and that, I mean, do you love the one this lady has on right here? Right. Did they get burned with the streetcars? I don't think so. Speaking of babushkas, here's the standing yeah. load. Lots of them. Really boring ceiling lights on that car. <laughs> <laughs> and and this is what an old lady looked like back then. <sighs> See, we're all much more hip today. We've got a picnic basket that she's taken somewhere. I just love this picture. It's a great picture. <laughs> it is great. Uh, it's Shirley Temple. Yeah. She has sneakers on. Doesn't have fancy shoes. Yeah. Even right. she was taught to not be on the streetcar line tracks. Oh, yeah. Uh, here's mailmen uh, loading at the main post office in downtown to do their run, the routes probably in the rest of downtown. And uh, they rode for free and, well, not really for free. The post office paid Twin City Lines 
a certain amount um, for them, but they didn't personally have to pay the fare. Now, did they carry mail on like everyday streetcars with people or did they have like special streetcars that did just mail? Well, that's actually, there's a longer answer to that. Back around 1900, okay. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, the, the University Avenue streetcar actually, they carried pouch mail all over the system. And the University Avenue streetcar actually had mail slots that you could go and put a letter in. And there was oh. pouch mail, closed pouch mail handled until 1951 out to Hopkins. Um, in this case, though, this is just the letter carriers moving around town on the streetcar. Okay, got it. Okay. And by the way, this guy, there's better homes and gardens this guy's got a copy of. Here's the Broadway Bridge in Minneapolis with the Grain Belt Brewery in the distance. This was shortly before they were going to close it. <clears throat> And that's the bridge that part of which goes over to Nicollet Island. That's correct. I'm sorry, not close it before they were going to take out the streetcars in 1951 and then redeck the bridge. The bridge itself stayed all open for a much longer. Uh, here's the walkway um, through the storage yard at Snelling. Here you see a couple of the lightweights in the distance. This is looking out of Snelling Station towards the shops. This is the corner of 9th and Wabasha. And this car, um, which should be a Hamlin Cherokee car, is northbound on Wabasha. And this is a University Avenue car coming off the single track on 9th Street onto Wabasha. And this down here, this was the Farman and Clark building. And of course, there's a big Hams billboard. And this is Wabasha, and I want to say that's Fifth Street. Yeah, that would be Fifth Street. So we're up here in the Lowry Hotel building. The garage is full. And here, viewed from St. Paul City Hall, is the Wabasha Street Bridge. Navy Island down here. And Tugboat Annie's is occupying the building on Navy Island. This is the corner of 27th and Lake. And this is where you had the rioting and the building that the photographer is in is gone. This building, which had the Gandhi Mahal restaurant in it, is burned and completely gone. Uh, this building that had the ballroom in it is still there, but badly damaged. And here they are uh, expanding the Capitol grounds in 1948. They've already put in the curving Constitution Avenue. And I think this is the Veterans Memorial Building going in. Uh, here they are in downtown on uh, Fifth Street at Marquette. And uh, they're loading streetcars on both ends. This was when uh, they were uh, uh, they would have a, a separate conductor, a fare collector, uh, to collect fares on the back end, so they could get the streetcars out of town and not hold up everybody else. If you look at the windows, looks like they're all foggy. So is it safe to say it'd be kind of stuffy inside the cars during the winter time? Oh yeah, yeah, they yeah. fogged up. Absolutely. Definitely, they didn't have enough ventilation to keep them clear. And so then when they sold the PCC cars, uh, they suddenly found themselves short of enough equipment to run. They had tons of street cars, but they had a whole bunch of them that they had that were just in storage. Uh, and so they had to come back and do emergency rehabs of a bunch of street cars to replace the PCCs and get them through the last year of service or six, eight months of service. And this guy, I forget his name, but he's the uh, superintendent of maintenance. Dick, Dick, this is your counterpart here. We and, need to get Dick a fedora hat. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I really like that. It almost looks like a Stetson, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, fedora, definitely. You need one of those. Yeah, right. Can it have a name badge on it and stuff too? Or? Yeah, whatever you want. 
a slightly <laughs> less a slightly less snug uh, jacket mm -hmm. coat would help. <laughs> so, so in, in thank you, in Dave. 19, I'm sorry. In 1953, um, they cut the University Avenue line at the city limits, uh, but the two city councils didn't agree on the timing of it. So it switched to bus in St. Paul, but it still ran as streetcars in Minneapolis for a while longer. So now at the city limits, you had to go and transfer between the bus and the streetcar. That only went on for a couple of months. Mindless. <laughs> And uh, here we're uh, moving down. This is them pulling the overhead wire off the Wabashaw Street Bridge mm. and taking down the fencing at the Como Park Station oh. and converting the motormen to bus drivers. This is inside one of the MAC buses. Conversion. And, oh, once again, um, he, all these guys had a grip. Had they had they had some kind of a box? This guy has made his out of a out of a toolbox that you could buy at a hardware store. That would also hold his lunch. Uh sure. Right, he's got the thermos. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're ending with Christmas decorations since tis the season. Uh, this is the corner of Seventh and Robert. Uh, this car turning the corner is actually a pullout from Duluth Station, headed for South St. Paul. Uh, probably to uh, get the shift change out of the stockyards and bring those people back to downtown. And this is what downtown looked like during the Christmas holiday shopping season. It's amazing to think of. Uh, this is uh, 7th at, I want to say, uh, Minnesota Street. Yeah, 7th in Minnesota. Got the Christmas decorations up. There were a couple of three different five and dime stores in this stretch. Uh, there were no There's deals nothing. back then. You, If you shopped, you went downtown. Yeah. And there were a lot of fur coats. You either had a cloth coat or you had a fur coat. And this is another view of the same, same block, W.T. Grant. And loading at night. Uh, this is over at 4th and Wabasha. Oops. And uh, Brian ran this wonderful photo on the web, on the Facebook page. Um, I think this is, uh, yeah, pretty sure this is like 7th and Wabasha, looking east with the Christmas decorations. This, this is the corner of 4th and Cedar, right by the St. Paul Pioneer Press offices. And then, of course, this wonderful shot uh, with Christmas decorations looking up at the illuminated Capitol. Uh, taken down at uh, 5th and Wabasha. And that's the show.